Hello, my name is Tom and I'm back for another video on Formula 1 Fantasy. In this video we're going to have a little look at the prices um, and who, who's the value picks. We're going to have a look at the prices from last season, compare them to this season. We're going to have a look at um, who was scoring the best points per million as a constructor and also as a driver last season and trying to make a kind of projection based on, based on last season performance uh, as to what's going to happen in 2022. Obviously, take it with a big old pinch of salt that new regulations, new new cars, new drivers, etc. The uh, projected points per million you can see in this column is probably inaccurate. But it's the best I can do at the moment based on last last year's performance. So if the drivers perform to the same sort of level as last year, given their new prices, I've calculated what their points per million will be for this year. So you can kind of get an idea of what it might be. But obviously, there's lots of different factors which affect that, which I'm going to go into briefly. Um, so yeah, but the main the main category at the moment is the average points per million from last year. So we can see um, who who the value picks were from last year, and just kind of compare it to where they stand this year. Um, and then going forward after each race, I'm going to be update, updating the points per million uh, for each driver and also for the constructors up here. Um, so I'll update the spreadsheet after each race so we can keep track of exactly who the best value is um, throughout the season. And it kind of helps us to pick pick our teams as we go forward. Um, so yeah, uh, before I go any further, please make sure to like and subscribe if you want if you like more of this stuff. The last video I did was really really positively received, so thank you for everyone who's commented and liked that. Um, really appreciate it. But anyway, moving on, let's get on with it. Um, so the first thing I just want to go through the, the data that I can see here. Um, like I say, take it all with a, bit, a big pinch of salt. But let's start with Red Bull and Mercedes because that's you know that's <laughs> that's where where it, all the big fighting was last season. So you can see the Red Bull prices um, have come right up to match Mercedes this year. Uh, there's a huge gap last year, which meant Red Bull had a really, really good points per million, um, as you can see here, highlighted in the yellowy colour, uh, 2.1 uh, points per million last year, which was uh, quite uh, like head and shoulders above everyone else, pretty much. Um, the only ones that really came very close to it were McLaren and Ferrari. Um, but yeah, so last year Red Bull looking really good for points per million. Uh, this year, because the prices have like leveled out between the Mercedes and Red Bull, uh, the projected points per million based on last year's performance will, is actually dead even. Um, so it's kind of interesting when you're looking to pick your team. If you're maybe you're deciding between the constructor of Mercedes or constructor of Red Bull, looking at the projected I, again. Remember, this is just like my the averages that I've generated from last season, like based on average price and average performance, that sort of thing. But it comes out as 1.7 and 1.7, uh, so it's kind of dead even. Um, uh, whereas the prices are obviously two million different, so maybe in that respect you want to go for Red Bull. Obviously, take into account this: um, we're not just basing our teams on <laughs> on points per million from last season. That's that would be stupid. You've got to take into account all the other uh, variables, with, like I mentioned in my last video. So yeah. On this video, I'm purely just looking at the numbers. Just yeah, kind of interesting. Um, so moving down, moving down the list, um, we've got McLaren, who are potentially potentially going to be a bargain um, this season. Last season, they were 1.9 points per million. So like I say, only only bested by Red Bull last season, and they're projected as 1.9 again. That may be inflated by Norris's outstanding performance last season. He was underpriced. Um, and really outperformed his his price range. And it's really interesting though that because even though they did so well, and like you see Red Bull did really well and their price goes shooting up, McLaren did really well and their price comes down. Really kind of interesting to see that. Um, so yeah, McLaren potentially a bargain um, as a constructor this season. They look they look really strong. If they can sort out their front brake issues, maybe they'll be maybe they'll be right up there at the top of the grid. Um, we'll see. Um, also uh, interesting down here is Haas and uh, everyone's like really fascinated by Haas this season because you we, we just don't know what's going to happen and we it's looking like they're going to be potentially really strong um we just don't know but because they're so cheap in Formula Fantasy 1 that it's like it's really a gamble that a lot of people are going to take I think a lot of people are even going to have Haas as their constructors which you know it's a interesting one they're so cheap it does enable you to if you want to focus on getting all the best drivers getting Haas as a constructor might not be the worst thing in the world um, so they only offered 1.3 points per million last season and projected as 1.3 points this season but I think this is a massive under estimation because of last season they had Mazepin who was a complete embarrassment let's face it this season they've got Magnussen um, who's an experienced driver he's been with the team before yes the car wasn't like designed around him and everything but pff, let's face it he, he's not Mazepin so he's going to do better so I think this 1.3 is quite a big under value here and has could be a really good decent shout for the season going forward 
Um, just looking briefly at the um, some of the data from the testing as well, I've only based this on Bahrain because Barcelona was like the first preliminary tests and a lot of things have changed since then, so that I'm just looking at the most up-to-date stuff. It's kind of interesting to see like who the fastest laps are. Um, the fastest lap, obviously, you can see here Red Bull. The second fastest lap is Haas. <laughs> now, I know it's testing, you don't want to read too much into it, but it is kind of interesting. So the top three were Red Bull, Ferrari and Haas. Um, you'd obviously expect to see Ferrari and Red Bull up there. You probably would have thought Mercedes would be the next one along, uh, but actually has up there with Schumacher's lap of 132.241. Kind of interesting. Uh, again, it's testing, it's pre-season, there's lots of changes in the current week before the Grand Prix, so... But it is very... The key word of the video, interesting, to see that Hazard doing so well there. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll keep track of what's going on and I'll update this bit here to see how we can see the points per million for each constructor and we'll see if has are proven to be such good value as they, they may well be. Um, so yeah, moving down to the driver section, Hamilton and Verstappen again, can't, can't ignore these two. Their prices are almost identical, it's kind of um, funny that Verstappen's price is actually less than Hamilton's even though he won the championship last season. Um, you can see points per million last season, Verstappen was such good value because he was so cheap um, compared to how well he did. 1.54 points per million and this season projected at the same level of performance so basically is if he's going to be like winning the championship again he's still projected at 1.28 which is still well the second best of after Norris um, for this coming season so Verstappen again Verstappen versus Hamilton you probably want Verstappen in your team but you know, it's this is just based on the numbers. I'm not going to go into all the other factors right now. Um, uh, moving on, oh, just so you know, um, the, uh, obviously this is really hard to work out because there's been lots of changes to the drivers. So that you can see the drivers in brackets. So the numbers here are based on like who, for example, last season. <clears throat> these figures here are taken from Bottas's results and Bottas's price, and then um, so Russell is obviously the new driver, but so his projected points per million is based kind of on what Bottas did last season. It's really hard to try to cross between the two. Like from Russell going from Williams to Mercedes, it's just almost impossible to try and to, to try and predict that how that's going to be affected. What is interesting is the price of Russell and Perez as technically the second drivers in their team. Like Max and Lewis are still like probably going to be the best drivers in their team. Like arguably, maybe people would say Russell is better. Blah blah blah. But um, I don't think that's going to happen. At least not straight away. I think uh, Hamilton will still be the number one driver. And to see Russell at 24 million and Perez at 17.5 million is really quite a massive gap um, for title contending cars so I think Perez in that respect could be a real steal go for Russell if you want to if you think um, Mercedes is going to do well and you're a fanboy of Russell go for it but I think Perez at 17.5 in comparison is such a massive steal and you can also turbo drive Perez you cannot put the turbo driver on Russell um, so Russell's price of 24 is just not providing the value that I would want from, from someone that I'm paying that much for uh, Perez uh, you can turbo drive and double his points. Uh, your main points in the season are probably going to come from your constructor and your turbo driver. So for getting the, getting the best turbo driver is um, <clears throat> really important. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Um, obviously, other contenders for turbo driver would be like the clerk and science, arguably. Um, science offering really good value last season, and if he does as well this season, based on his performance and price, he's still projected at 1.17, which is a fraction, fraction better than Leclerc so and he's a million cheaper in this game um, so if you only want one of the Ferrari drivers I'd argue that Sainz is the one to go for that million saving and really nothing in it <clears throat> in points per million um, I think Sainz is the one to go for I'm personally probably going to go for both Ferrari drivers with the Red Bull constructors but that, that may change depending on what happens in free practice uh, Friday and Saturday <clears throat> someone I think is really interesting this season is Ricardo. He's had a massive price drop from 17.3 at the start of last season to 14.5 at the beginning of this season. Last season he was only offering less than one point per million, so really undervalued, and that's obviously why his price has come down so much this season. Do you think Ricardo is going to have as bad a season this season as he did in 2021? I don't think so personally. Um, like I said, the McLaren looks good if they can sort out their braking issues, and I think projected at 1.1 because of his new price. That 1.1 is probably, I think an underestimation I think he's going to be a lot stronger than that obviously it's hard to predict at the moment because we don't know exactly what's going on but I think my tip would be Ricardo is going to be underpriced I personally would not get him for the Bahrain Grand Prix because <clears throat> because of the Covid situation and how fit he's going to be whether he'll actually race etc <clears throat> excuse me I'm trying to talk too fast it's making me cough um yeah but um Ricardo 
maybe from like Saudi Arabia going forward, like the second race going on going forward, could be a really good shout. So keep keep a close eye on Ricardo. I think he could be super value this this season. Um, moving down, um, I'm not going to go over every driver. You can see for yourself the numbers. Something that really is another standout thing is Sonoda offering terrible value last season. 0.47 and because his price hasn't really changed um, he's still projected at 0.47 but again this number is probably inaccurate because um, that was he got such a bad points per million last season because he had such a strong teammate in Gasly who's he's still his teammate but he also Sonoda struggled with a few DNFs I think he had three DNFs and also did not start so that's four times minus 20 which is 80 points so he's lost 80 points which is a big factor in why his points per million is um, really poor so <clears throat> hopefully Sonoda's sorted things out and you know he's moved to Italy and he's trained he's like better discipline and everything from um from moving to Italy rather than uh, from compared to the beginning of the last season um so he's kind of under the wing of Alpha Torre's like um base in Italy a bit more and you could see the progress he was making towards the end of last season he looked a lot stronger a lot closer to Gasly um at the end of last season so Sonoda's definitely one to watch out for despite the numbers here um However, if you are going solely on the numbers and you want someone in that price range, which is where I currently am at the moment, my current team setup, I have, um, I have 9.5 million to spend on the final position. So I basically, I can get anyone in this sort of range of prices. Um, so Sonoda was the first one I went for. Um, the other two I'm really looking strongly at, Bottas and Stroll, and I'm leaning at the moment towards Bottas. Um, not so much because the numbers here, although the numbers here from Raikkonen last season aren't that bad. Um, I think Bottas could be a really good shout because I think Bottas is a very good driver and he is likely, we don't know obviously, but he's likely to um, outscore his teammate who's brand new to Formula 1, uh, Guan Yu, if I'm saying that correctly. Um, I think he could be a really good shout, Bottas at 9 million. Um, Alfa Romeo looked very fast, some reliability issues, particularly in Barcelona, looked a bit better in Bahrain, but still... Um, kind of unknown at the moment so keep a close eye on what happens in free practice one two and three before qualifying at the weekend Bottas could be a really good shout in that little if you've got that that sort of price range you need to fill a gap in your team um Stroll's the other option again didn't offer great value last season 0.6 his price has dropped quite heavily which is why he's now projected as 0.84 let's face it everyone down in this bottom section is 0. Point someone so the closest you can get to one the better and 0. 0.84 <clears throat> isn't the best Sorry, it's not, oh, it's not the best, it's also not the worst. So Stroll could be an option if Aston Martin looks strong. Uh, my personal preference is going to be between Bottas and Sonoda for the time being, but we will see. Um, uh, lastly, I just want to touch on Schumacher, Mazepin down here. I put not not applicable for Mazepin because he did so poorly. He had so many like DNFs, uh, like literally, yeah, it's just terrible. A complete embarrassment. I'm really glad Mazepin is, is out of the sport uh, this season. I'm really pleased to see Magnussen come back. Magnussen being put back in at the same price as Mazepin is potentially bargain of the season. I think, like I've said already, I think Haz are going to do well this season. We don't know if they're going to be like supreme or if they're going to be like midfield or. But regardless, at this price, you just can't, you can't, you can't like reject that price. So I think Magnussen's a great shout. Um, but yeah, the points per million. I've not calculated it because Magnussen, um, sorry, Mazepin's points per million last season were so miserable. It's just not even worth like thinking about. Um, that's pretty much it. So yeah, going forward, I'm going to be monitoring the price per million um, uh, each week, updating the spreadsheet, keep you guys updated. Let me know what you think. Who do you think is the most like value pick this season? Who's overpriced? Who's underpriced? Let, let me know what you think. I'm kind of interested to know. I just I just love the fantasy game. I love Formula One. I love Formula One fantasy. And yeah, let's let's have some fun and can't wait for the weekend. I'll see you after the Grand Prix on Sunday uh, with another video. And yeah, let's go.